Hey guys, it's X and Shadow, and welcome back to Let's Play Banjo Tooie. In the last part, we did a couple of things in uh, Hellfire Peaks, mainly the transformation in Mumbo stuff, and we started off on that whole train station uh, thing. What was it? In this part, we're going to actually get to some of the bosses in this level, and yes, I said bosses. There are indeed two of them: one for the fire side and one for the ice side. Uh, you can go after whatever boss in whatever order you want. You can do the fire side first. You can do the ice side first. It really doesn't matter. I am doing the ice side first, mostly just because I normally go after the fire side first and I wanted to change of pace. Anyway, this asshole's name is Bigafoot, and there's not too much you can do about him. He's just sort of guarding these uh, shoes. But how do we get those shoes to do anything? Because all of our eggs aren't doing squat to him. Well, you just gotta wait for this cutscene to go by, and then he'll get hit by the dragon thingy, and he'll get hurt. Now, you do have to, in order for the cutscene to activate, very similarly to the cutscene in the fireside where you unlock the, fi the flying pad, you have to be near big a foot when the dragon is shooting out its ice balls. So, keep that in mind, because that's the only time, you, only time and the only way you'll be able to get big a foot out of the way for you to get these uh, claw climber boots. However, unlike the fireside, the claw climber boots are really only useful for getting to the boss, unlike, uh, well, unlike the flying pad, which is just useful as a shortcut to whatever place in the fireside that you want to go to for whatever reason. Anyway, ow! Oh, actually, I lied. These uh, claw climber boots are not just for getting to the boss, they're also for getting to the other side of the train station, meaning the upper level of the lava side train station. I am a big, fat liar. Anywho, hi there, Gobi. How are things? Yeah, you know, why don't you, do you want a back massage or something? I think that might be very nice. Why don't I give you just a nice, good crack on the back? Actually, bill drilling won't do anything. You have to beak buster. Uh, so, yeah. A, tap C, BAM! All that water is gone. Have a nice life of eternal dehydration there, Gobi. <laughs> Is the evil laugh getting any better, guys? I've been practicing. Anyway, uh, that's how you cool down the engine to Chuffy. And now you'll be able to take him to the uh, ice side cavern whenever you want without, any, uh, without really that much of a problem. However, you're only going to be going to the ice side train station once. And really, you'll only be going to the Fireside train station, uh, well, you'll only be bringing Chuffy to the Fireside train station. Mainly twice, once to get into the Ice Side train station, and then once to get out. Uh, Hailfire Peaks is actually the last level in order to have a, in a last level with the train station. Um, yeah, it's just the last level with the train station, although once you see the final level, you'll, it'll make sense why that level doesn't have a Chuffy uh, station in it either. And really, this means that this is, this is the end of our trainee friend. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm not that choking up about it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Chuffy. I've, uh, I've gone on and on and on about how much of a great mechanic Chuffy is. But in the end, you know, I feel like he is, even with all the cool stuff that they did with him, I feel like he is a little bit unutilized, underutilized. There's a few thing more, there's quite a few more potential applications for this uh, sort of mechanic, you know, the train station being one of the very few ways where you can transport items from world to world. So, I feel like they could have done a hell of a lot more with this, but what they did do with this is good enough for me, and I'm happy that they, um, and I'm happy that they put him in the game, yeah. It's just sad to see him go, man. But anyway, look at how much of a difference there is between Hailfire Peaks and Grunty's Industries. We've been here for three parts, and we've already gotten more than half of the Jiggies in the entire level. Compare that to Hail compare that to Grunty's Industries, where we were still trying to figure out our way around the place back three parts in. You know, it's just so much more convenient to play, you know? Anyway, um, right now what we're doing is we're heating up Saber, uh, man, Saber, Wolf, whatever his name is. And you can do that with Fire Eggs. Thankfully, however, you don't have to walk all the way over there in order to heat him up with Fire Eggs, you know? You can just, uh, stand near the split-up pad, and then, 
A game fire eggs at him. Although that is easier if you do have the uh, amazing gaze glasses. And then once he's uh, warmed up, you're gonna have to pick him up and carry him to his tent using uh, Banjo's taxi pack ability. So, you know, that's the good thing about standing right next to the, the swap pads is, well, not the swap pads, the split up pads, is that you can just go straight to Banjo and then walk him over to Saber Wolf without having to have. Well, not nearly as much backtracking, but you do cut out a backtracking trip to the split up pad, so that's nice at the very least. So, yeah, uh, Saber Wolf's tent, if you remember correctly, is. I Do, do I have invincibility frames when I'm picking up uh, enemies? Huh, uh, well, picking up stuff with a taxi pack, I mean? That's cool, I guess. Or I might not, it might just be a camera trick, but whatever. Also, uh, that that cavern behind the ice wall near uh, where Saberman was standing, that's actually the cavern with the Globo. And if you got to this point in the game without finding the Mega Globo, that's supposed to be your key to find the ice key or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, it's actually pretty easy to find uh, where the uh, where Saber Wolf is supposed to be. If you well, Saber Man is supposed to be. It's just this tent over here. Um, I, they say something about the tent, and it's right next to the entrance slash the uh, slash the warp pad. So you know you don't have to worry too much about finding him. You can just get him over here, no problem. Although I'm surprised that he'd rather breathe in the acidic, uh, deadly lava fumes than staying in the sub-zero frostbite inducing temperatures. Why are you still in this level, man? Go home! You know, neither one of these sides sounds particularly appealing to live in. You might as well just leave. I, okay, so he says perhaps I'll ride on a dolphin, which is I assume a reference to one of his games. But anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh yes, I remember what I was, uh, saying. Um, I think he'll say a couple more things if you hang out near his tent, but I can't really remember, so... Eh. 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 Anyway, um, right now what we're doing is, if you remember from last part, I believe, uh, we used the snowball to press a button over here, which pumped a Jiggy out of the oil rig. Basically, what we need to do is we need to go into uh, this hole here, but you can only do that by using the sack pack, shack pack, whatever it's called, by using that ability as normal banjo and uh, fitting through that hole. That's the other main use for that ability besides going through uh, dangerous liquids is, well, fitting through small holes. And not as uh, not as seamless jump cut there. Um, I, I did a little bit of meandering about before. Well, <laughs> something to be said about recording these things as soon as you wake up, you yawn a lot, and I've been trying to suppress it, but I can't do that very well, so you get to deal with my yawningness. Anyway, yeah, uh, I, just, I, had, I did a little bit of meandering about, so I just cut to where I actually started making some progress, and, well, this is the Icicle Grotto, which is sort of the main like a uh, cavey type area. Oh god damn it. Oh god damn it. You can make it. You can make it, Banjo. I have uh, faith in you. Come on. Yes. Yes, you've got the touch. Oh, why did I do that? That was dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Anyway, the Icicle Grotto has a couple of important things in it, but really it just serves as um it serves as a as a passageway for us to get one of the more important uh, one of the more important upgrades in the game, or at least one of the more convenient upgrades in the game. Although there is a warp pad in here, so you will probably want to come back here because there are a few thing other things that you're gonna want to get other than just passing through to get well get to the power up that I'm looking for. Now, here's actually a pretty cool uh, puzzle, though I think it's not really an original one, because you do this in a couple of other games. Uh, you see these stalactites up here, or... S uh, whatever they're called, I don't know which one's stalactite or stalagmite, whether it's ceiling or uh, the floor. There's some sort of way to remember it, but I can't do that. Um, you shoot them with grenade eggs or whatever else type of eggs that might work, and then they fall to the ground. And by to the ground, I mean they fall and then stay suspended in midair for no good reason. Um, 
You'll use that to jump across and get the ability, but you have to do it with Solo Kazooie. Now, Solo Kazooie, while she moves a bit faster than Banjo, her control is, well, it's fluid and responsive. It's not as precise as, as Banjo's is, because you move an awful lot faster and you have a hell of a lot of acceleration. Don't get me wrong, you're never fighting these controls, but sometimes it may, it's just something that makes um, precision platforming like this tricky, you know? And look at that, we've already got, uh, we've already got all of the j uh, notes in this level, and we've got 8 out of the 10 jiggies. Look at how great we're doing in this level, and we're barely in, well I don't want to say we're barely in it, but we're moving a hell of a lot faster through this level than, uh, the level immediately before it. That, that's sort of why I think that Grunty's Industries and Hellfire Peaks should have swapped places, because Grunty's Industries is quite honestly just a harder level than Hellfire Peaks is, and I, I feel like, uh, an area run by Grunty herself would have made a, fi a better penultimate level than Palefire Peaks. Don't get me wrong though, I do love this level and I love going back to play it over and over again. It's just, you know, in terms of pacing, it might have been better to put it after, um, to put it before Grunty's Industries. Although, really considering that you can play this game at whatever the hell pace you want, it doesn't really matter. You can go to Hailfire Peaks and beat quite a bit of it without anything from Grunty's Industries, you know? Anyway, uh, this is the glide ability, which finally lets us fly as Kazooie without using any red feathers. Thank you. Well, I shouldn't say fly, more like, well, well, glide. Yeah. Basically, you press the A button in the air, and then you press the, you press the Z button in the air, and you, well, you fly, you glide. Now, you can't gain altitude, but you lose altitude at a very slow rate, allowing you to travel a pretty damn long distance as, well, Kazooie. Anyway, I don't know why the guy didn't uh, respond to my um, first hatch, but this is the third alien baby, and you need to hatch him in order to get him to teleportation, yeah, over to his dad. Oh, once you get all three aliens, no matter what uh, order you get them in, that's when you'll unlock the, um, well, not unlock, that's when you'll earn the jiggies after you get that third, um, that third alien. You just have to get all of them, it doesn't matter what order it is. Although I generally go after the glide one last, just because it's usually on the way to other stuff, you know? Anyway, um... You know, when they say beam me up, Scotty, they don't generally mean it in a literal way. They mean it in like a teleport me back to the ship, Scotty. Although they never actually say either of those things, so... Yeah. I, I gotta wonder where the beam me up, Scotty thing came from if it was never actually said on an episode of Star Trek. You know, is it just like, was it misquoted so much that it just started to happen, or... I don't know. It's just like one of those things where elementary, my dear Watson, became Holmes, Sherlock Holmes' catchphrase, even though I don't think he ever says it in any of the books. Anyway, 70th Jiggy. We could now go straight to the final boss without having to worry about any other level in the entire game. You can skip an entire world if you want to, and potentially two. Well, not actually potentially two, but you can skip one entire world if you want to. Meaning, the last world. I mean, I guess you could skip all of Grunty's Industries if you chose the right uh, jiggies from the last two worlds. But, eh. Anyway, here's another place where we need to use the glide ability, and I'm pretty sure it's actually the place where the game expects you to use the glide ability. Um, well, the glide ability first, anyway. Um, I'm pretty sure they expect you to use the glide ability first to go back and get this Jinjo. Here, but I went back and got that Cheeto page and uh, alien baby first Because you know, it's actually really easy to backtrack back in here because well Well, you know There's the warp pad and stuff and we we've almost got every single jiggy in the entire level Yeah, that's right. Hailfire Peaks is the first level in the entire game and the only level aside from the last one where you can get every single Jiggy on your first run through. You'll only have to make one more stop back here, and that's to press the button in order to get the Jolly Rogers Lagoon, uh, uh, pig, pig, pig pool, uh, Jiggy. That's awesome. I can't 
tell you how much I love the fact that you can do everything in uh, Hailfire Peaks in one go. That's just amazing level design, and I love, 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 love that. No, don't get me wrong. I still love the multi, uh, the non-linear, go wherever you want, use things in earlier levels and backtrack sort of level design. That's just been the staple of the series. Well, the, not the series, but more the staple of this game throughout the entire adventure. But when you get to the end of the level, you know, you don't want to have to make like 12, 1,200 backtracking trips to a level you've just been to, you know. You just want to, you just want to... At this point, you're getting to the point where you just want to get to Grunty, you know? So being able to do everything in one go in Hellfire Peaks is just amazing, 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 and I love that about this level. Also, the camera's really spazzing out here, but that's the last uh, Cheeto page, if I remember correctly. And you get it by turning into Sack Pack uh, Banjo and waddling your way through this tiny, tiny cave. Yeah, um, I think that you could un, uh, pre pre unhold the Z button and then walk as normal Banjo through that cave, but I don't think that uh, I, you'll eventually just have to go back into it anyway in order to exit out the uh, out the door, and well, it's just faster this way. But next time, we finish up Hailfire Peaks. I'm X and Shadow, and I'll see you guys later.